This is a video about my MacBook versus my custom built PC. Right now I am in my office. When I'm in New York City, I edit in two places. Usually in my office, I have two computers. I have this setup of two Apple 27 inch displays with the MacBook plugged in behind it. And then I have my PC. When I'm not here editing, I have my MacBook at my apartment and I get work done that way as well. So I am using my MacBook for the majority of the time, but I haven't truly put my PC to the test yet. And that's what this video is all about. But a quick run through the MacBook has a one terabyte SSD, which is super helpful when I'm editing my current projects. I can put all of the footage on my computer and I don't have to worry about external hard drives because that's when things get a little slowed down. 3.1 gigahertz Intel i7 core processor. My PC has a GTX 1080 and a Ryzen 7 processor. 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD with an additional four terabytes of storage, so they're not flash storage, but it's good if I just wanna load some footage off on the PC. A beautiful LG Ultrawide monitor, a Logitech MX Master 2S in white, how sick does that white look? And a Fire Rose mechanical keyboard. I just ordered this on Amazon. The colors were super cute. I love the white finish, but it's, it's pretty loud. So four or five months ago, Austin Evans helped build this $2,700 editing machine. Hey guys. I wanted to compare. How does Premiere work on a machine of a PC versus MacBook? Because when you're editing with Adobe products, you're not utilizing all of the power that your MacBook has to offer if you're editing in something like Final Cut 10. Although I appreciate speed, I also appreciate the fact that Premiere is better than Final Cut. Just kidding, it is subjective. What are your needs? Do you use Photoshop, Lightroom, or do you just need a speedy editing software? If you're new to editing, Final Cut 10 will actually probably be simpler and easier to use. And if you use Apple products, it will be faster. That's why I now have a PC to see how things go with this. Is it quicker? I don't know because I've had this for several months. I haven't edited anything on it. I've literally just been doing extreme web browsing. The things that we will explore today, number one, export times, PC versus MacBook. Number two, how does it handle 4K footage? If you guys have seen the last video, maybe it didn't seem like a lot, but it is a lot. It was shot in 4K, which is something that I normally don't do, and there is a lot of moving parts, different stories I was trying to tell. So I'm gonna edit half of that video on my PC, half of that video on my Mac. And then the general differences. Usually creative types use Apple products. So I got a new hard drive, a G drive, one terabyte up to 136 megabytes per second. Basically all of my hard drives that I use when my footage just isn't on my computer or I copy over old footage to hard drives, they're all formatted for the Mac. So this is going to be my permanent one terabyte Mac to PC, PC to Mac file transfer hard drive. Google Drive is not fast enough. I'm not gonna upload and download 100 gigs of footage just to edit a video on a different machine. So just dedicating one hard drive for the back and forth. So I have the footage over on the PC. Now it's time to get editing. And what is so mm, amazing about this huge monitor, I guess this is kind of a LG curved display review as well is my timeline can span this entire line, which is bigger than on my 27 inch display. Look at that, look how nice that is. And I can enlarge these icons to very big thumbnails so it's easy to find things. I like this.
Well, yesterday, edited on the PC. Today, it's time to edit on the Mac. When videos comprise of many days of footage and a lot of different concepts, it requires more than one day of editing. So we're gonna get it today. I can barely hold up this camera. I worked out for the first time in a long time yesterday and I'm dying. Yes, I'm done. Probably this has been five seconds for you guys, but it's actually been hours since we last chatted. I finished up the video. This is the final timeline. It looks good and the playback yes, is fantastic. So this is not just 4K footage, it's playing at half of the quality. It's 4K footage with a color grade on top of it, just via an adjustment layer. Um, and my MacBook is handling it very well, actually. So it's time to export this guy. So we're gonna do the H.264 YouTube 4K preset. Export. All right, um, I guess I will see you guys in 40 minutes. Okay, so we have the same exact export settings and export right off the back. The estimation is 24 minutes instead of 45. So I'm sure it'll jump up a little bit like the Mac did, but right out the gate, we're looking in less than half of the time. And here we go. Okay, while we wait for those videos to export, let's answer some questions from you guys via Twitter. You guys legitimately have the best questions. And before that, I want to remind you guys that I made a Skillshare class how to vlog. You know, it's one thing to promote Skillshare, but then to actually set aside the time to make a class and it's helping you guys. I've heard so much cool feedback. I love it. it it's so exciting to hear. My how to vlog series takes you from what camera you should use to how to film, how to build a story, and then how to edit and publish on YouTube. And it's only 30 minutes. I wanted to make it as less intimidating as possible. And Skillshare is hooking it up for the first 500 people who click the link in the description below. You are going to get your first two months of Skillshare for only 99 cents. If you're not familiar with Skillshare, it is a online learning community with over 17,000 classes in design, photography, videography, entrepreneurship, marketing, the sky's the limit. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of those classes and if you get the annual membership it is less than ten dollars a month so check out my Skillshare link in the description below and let me know what you guys think of my class how to vlog okay so let's get into your questions Kent the homie what's a childhood hobby you want to get back into guitar uh, guitar was my life at one point and I sold off all of the gear to buy photo video gear and I think it's time to buy back some guitar gear and get back into it. Roberto, what's the coolest piece of tech you own right now? It might not be the coolest, but it has changed my life the most this past year and that is the AirPods. They are always in my ears. I'm always listening to music, listening to a podcast, switching to calls with people. It, they're always in my ears, super versatile, super easy to use. Do you have a plan to travel soon and where? I just spent a month and a half not New York. I was on the West Coast and other different places. So I am so excited back to be in New York. I love New York. New York is my home. I love it dearly. With that said, I'll probably get the travel bug sooner than later. I wanna go to Europe. I wanna go to places like Paris and Barcelona and Berlin, Germany. Hopefully it'll happen soon. Can you describe a time when you were working on a project and you realized you leveled up as a creator? I would say every time I finished a Creative Spaces TV video, that's, that's when I felt proud and I was like, wow, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this when I started the project, but every episode that I finished, I was like, high five, Sarah, you did it. That was one of the most challenging things that I've done and it's the first series that I started, the first legitimate thing that I think gave me credibility as a filmmaker. And you know, I brought it through several seasons and it was so fun to do. But yeah, I think it not only gave me credibility, but it just told some amazing stories. That's what I'm passionate about is shedding light on the creative process, whether it's mine or other people. And that was the start of that journey uh, through that Creative Spaces TV series, but it was hard. 
it it pushed me to the limit. But thank you guys so much for asking questions. Usually I ask on Twitter, so you can follow me on Twitter at Sarah Dietschy. And I think these videos should be close to being exported now. Let's go check up on them. And we're done. Wow. So the PC took 20 minutes. The neck was finished at one hour and three minutes. Wow. So before I dive into some of the Mac versus PC quirks that kind of everyone talks about, let's dive in and really ask ourselves, but why was the PC so much quicker than the Mac? I think this debate is very emotional a lot of the times, but like why, 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 why? First, we have to address something in Adobe Premiere where you can find it in the project settings and you just go down to video rendering and playback. So Premiere uses some something called the Mercury Playback Engine. And you can have one of two technologies helping you out with GPU processing. It is either CUDA, CUDA reminds me of Gouda, like the cheese, or OpenCL. OpenCL is what you're going to see when editing in Premiere on a Mac, and CUDA is what you're going to see when you're editing on a PC usually. CUDA is a GPU processing technology actually created by NVIDIA themselves. So because the graphics card I'm using is the NVIDIA GTX 1080, I can seize the day with CUDA. And then OpenCL is a different technology that can be used for multiple different graphics cards. But CUDA is specific to an NVIDIA graphics card. When it comes to video playback in Premiere or rendering the files for it to be exported, that work can either fall on the CPU or the GPU. So the GPU does certain things like rendering effects like blur or maybe if you put LUTs on your video or any type of color grading, usually that's going to be rendered by the GPU. And how much RAM you have on your computer is what can accelerate this GPU processing. So the fact that I have an NVIDIA card that utilizes the CUDA technology that is specific to the NVIDIA card and I have double the RAM in the PC that I'm using, well, I think that's the reason why it's so much quicker. Now, if you wanna talk about optimization on the MacBook in terms of using all of the goodness of it, that's when final Cut 10 comes into the equation. Apple makes Final Cut, Apple makes Mac computers. So they're able to make that software and hardware marriage just beautiful. I was actually able to make a video comparison with Final Cut and a MacBook versus Premiere in a MacBook and Final Cut just destroyed in terms of rendering times. That's because Final Cut is optimized for a Mac computer. I know that was super technical, but hopefully that helps and explains why. And it's not just an emotional conversation of this is why Macs suck and PC sucks. Honestly, it comes down to that software and hardware relationship. What does that look like and the technology behind that? But also, what are your preferences? What do you like as a human? For me, I love the magic mouse. I love working on my MacBook. I'm quick on it. I'm not really used to this Logitech mouse. It just seems too thick, so I'm not as quick on it. But but that's something that I can get used to. On the PC, also there's no video previews. On a Mac, you just press a space bar when you're looking at videos in Finder and it pops up, you're able to scroll through, press the space bar again, and you move on with your life. You can't do that on a PC, you gotta double click the video. I film a lot on my phone, on my iPhone, so having AirDrop to easily send those two, three clips that I needed for my video straight to my MacBook is so much easier than to upload it to Google Drive and download it on my PC. And a little quick thing about the PC, the Windows button is so annoying. It's very, like, where's option? I want option, not that Windows button. This video that I edited was in 4K, so when it came to going through the footage in Premiere, I used the JKL shortcuts a lot for speeding up and slowing down, and I'll watch things in like two times speed. So I'm constantly changing the speeds of video to try to hear what I'm saying and make my in and out points super quick. I was able to do that with less lag on my PC, as well as actually record myself editing using OBS so that I could show you some of those editing clips 
in this video. So the PC was actually a little bit better when it came to playback and multitasking because of that more RAM and that GPU stuff what I talked about. Well, I definitely think I have said enough. Hopefully this shed some light on the PC versus Mac thing and maybe you became more informed or maybe you were slightly entertained. Hopefully you didn't fall asleep on that last talking bit. That was a lot. I love that my custom built PC is in full swing creating mode now. I pointed to a lot of different videos in this video. So everything that you might be curious about is going to be in the description below. Make sure you like this video guys. If you like it, like if you're a PC user, like if you're a Mac user, we can all be friendly around here. Leave a comment and make sure to hit that subscribe button for new videos every single week. Also make sure to check out that Skillshare link. The first 500 people, two months of Skillshare for only 99 cents. Shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and until next time guys stay peachy okay bye